Welcome to Premath. In this video tutorial, we have got these two circles as you can see in this figure. The red circle is inscribed in this square, whereas this small blue circle is inscribed in this uh, equilateral triangle. And furthermore, the side length of this square is 1 and the side length for this equilateral triangle is one as well and now we are going to find the distance x between these two centers a and b so let's go ahead and get started with the solution and here's our very first step let's focus on this square along with the red circle in it and we know that the side length of this square is one unit so therefore, by the definition, this diameter is going to be of length 1 as well. So therefore, the radius of this circle is going to be the half of this one. That means it's going to be 1 over 2 as you can see over here. And now let's go ahead and connect points A and C. Let's go ahead and connect point A and C. Let's go ahead and connect points B and D as well. And moreover, let's connect these centers A and B as you can see. And now we can see that this AC and BD, our radii, this AC which is a half, as you can see, this is a half. And let me call this distance BD as our radius lowercase r. And here is our next step. Let's recall this tangent to a circle theorem. And here is our tangent to a circle theorem. The angle between a tangent and a radius is always 90 degrees. That means they are perpendicular. So therefore this radius AC is perpendicular to this tangent line and likewise this radius BD is perpendicular to this tangent line as well and moreover this is also the radius of this red circle which is going to be a half again since the radius over here is 1 over 2 so this is going to be 1 over 2 and according to a tangent to a circle theorem this is going to be 90 degree as well. Then we can see that this is a square. Then by the definition of a square, if this side is a half, then this side CN is going to be a half 1 over 2 as well. So therefore, our distance CN equals to 1 over 2. And here's our next step. We know that this triangle NEH is an equilateral triangle. So therefore, all these three angles are going to be 60 degrees each. Always just keep in your mind they have the same angles. So thus each angle is 60 degrees. And now let's go ahead and draw perpendiculars H, D and H. EF. Let's go ahead and draw this one. This HD is this one perpendicular and the other one is EF. And here is our much nicer looking diagram and one more thing let's observe that since we are dealing with this an equilateral triangle so these perpendiculars HD and EF will always pass through this center B and these perpendiculars also going to be the angle bisectors. And in this next step we are going to calculate this distance DE, this part DE. So therefore we are going to focus on this right triangle EDH. In this triangle, we can see this angle is 60 degrees, this hypotenuse is 1, and we want to figure out this adjacent DE. 
And here's our SOCA TOA table with the trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. And since we are interested in hypotenuse and adjacent relationship, so we can see that cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So therefore, we are going to use cosine of 60 degrees equal to adjacent over hypotenuse in our case adjacent is simply de divided by our hypotenuse is one unit let's go ahead and put it one over here and we know that the cosine of 60 degrees is 0 0.5 so this is going to become 0 0.5 equals to de over one is same as de so thus our distance DE turns out to be 1 over 2. So that means this part DE equals to 1 over 2. And moreover, we know that this NE is the side length of this equilateral triangle, which is 1. So we can easily find this distance ND, which is going to be a 1 minus 1 over 2. 1 minus 1 over 2 is same as 1 over 2. So thus our ND distance turns out to be 1 over 2. And now we can see that this distance CD is just the sum of this distance CN plus this distance ND as I have just put it down over here. And we know that CN is 1 over 2. I can write down 1 over 2 plus ND is 1 over 2 as well. So that means CD is going to be simply 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is going to give us 1. Now once again this triangle NEH is an equilateral a triangle. And as I mentioned in our previous steps this uh, the perpendicular EF is going to be the angle bisector of this angle E. That means if this angle E is 60 degrees, so then this angle is going to be, half of that is going to be 30 degrees. So therefore, this angle BED is going to be 30 degrees. And now we are going to calculate the value of this radius R. Therefore, we are going to focus on this right triangle BDE as you can see over here. So once again, we will be using the trigonometry and here's the trig ratio that we needed to use tangent theta equal to opposite over adjacent. In our case, opposite is R and adjacent in our case is 1 over 2. So let's go ahead and write down tangent of this time our angle is 30 degrees so i'm going to write down 30 degrees tangent of 30 degrees equal to adjacent opposite in our case is r divided by adjacent is 1 over 2 and now we know that tangent of 30 degrees is 1 over square root of 3 let me go ahead and replace that one 1 over square root of 3 equal to r divided by 1 over 2. Let me go ahead and isolate r by just multiplying both sides by 1 over 2 on this side and 1 over 2 on this side. This and this is gone. So that means our r value turns out to be simply 1 over 2 times square root of 3 and here's our next step we draw a line BP such that this is perpendicular to this radius AC and moreover this BP is parallel to this CD that means this BP and this CD they are parallel now let's focus on this rectangle CDBP and here's the definition of rectangle. It has four angles each measuring 90 degrees. The opposite sides of a rectangle have the same length and are parallel. 
Therefore, our this BP and this CD, they are going to be equal in length and likewise this CP and this BD are going to be equal in length as well. So therefore BP equal to CD and we know that CD equals to 1. So therefore BP equals to 1 and also CP equal to BP and we know that the BP is a radius R. So therefore our CP is going to be equal to R as well. Now let's focus on this length AC which is a radius which is 1 over 2 and this PC or CP is R. So this length AP is going to be simply 1 over 2 minus R. So thus our length AP turns out to be 1 over 2 minus r and we know that r equals to 1 over 2 times square root of 3 so we are going to replace it over here and here i have replaced r's value and i can just see over here if i factor out this 1 over 2 from both ones i can write 1 over 2 times 1 over 1 minus 1 over square root of 3 now let's go ahead and cross multiply over here to simplify it. So we are going to get 1 over 2 is still outside. I'm going to keep it and when we cross multiply this thing we're going to get uh, 1 times square root of 3 is going to give us square root of 3 minus 1 times 1 is 1 divided by 1 times square root of 3 is going to give us square root of 3 and we when we simplify this thing that is going to be square root of 3 minus 1 divided by this 2 times square root of 3 so that is going to become 2 times square root of 3 and this is our AP distance. Now let's go ahead and call this AB equal to X as I call it X and now we are going to calculate the value of X and here's our final step. Let's focus on this triangle APB. And since this is a right triangle, we are going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And here's our Pythagorean theorem A square plus B square equal to C square. In our case, the longest leg is this AB. I'm going to call this leg C. I'm going to call this horizontal side A and this vertical side B. And here's our Pythagorean formula. Let's go ahead and fill in the blanks. In our case, A is one, B is this square root of three minus one divided by two times square root of three, and C is X. So we are going to get one square plus B is going to be this whole thing, uh, square root of three, minus 1 divided by 2 times square root of 3 and then square equal to x square. So let's go ahead and simplify. 1 square is 1 plus this is going to give us square root of 3 minus 1 square on the numerator and likewise on the denominator I can write 2 square root of 3 and then square equal to x square and now let's focus on this numerator part square root of 3 minus 1 square I have just copied it down over here and I have just broken it down to twice multiplying it square means we multiply it twice and then I use this double distribution foil method and then we got this one over here as you can see and our simplified form turns out to be 4 minus 2 times square root of 3. So I can write this one as 1 plus on the numerator this part is going to become 4 minus 2 times square root of 3 divided by and here's the denominator I just copy it down over here and when we simplified this thing 
this gave us 12. So the denominator turns out to be 12 equal to x square. And here I have copied down this fraction right over here. Let's go ahead and use the cross multiplication to simplify it. I'm going to put 1 over 1 and then let's do the cross multiplication. If we do that thing, that's going to give us 12 plus 4 minus 2 times square root of 3 divided by 1 times 12 is going to be 12 on the top. That's going to give us 16 minus 2 square root 3 divided by 12. And on the top, we can factor out 2, 2 times 8 minus square root of 3 divided by 12. And if we can reduce 2 and 12, that is going to give us 8 minus square root of 3 divided by 6. So thus we got this simplified answer as 8 minus square root of 3 divided by 6 equal to x square. And if we take a square root on both sides to isolate x, we got x equal to 8 minus square root of 3 divided by 6. And if we replace square root of 3 by approximately equal to 1.7321, our x value is going to be approximately equal to 1.02. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos. Bye.